Hey, what's up, everybody? Jeff Jarena here, and welcome to the Men Unplug podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the second quality of leadership. Now, if you haven't listened to the previous episode, I want to encourage you to do that as it sets up the show today. The reason I say that is because this episode is the second of a three-part series that I'm doing on leadership. Now, In this series, I share three essential qualities of an effective leader. And the first one I spoke about last week, which is episode 126. Now, before we dive into today's topic, I want to let you know that I've rescheduled my free webinar on how to clarify your calling to Monday, September 20th. In this training, I'm going to be going over the benefits of finding your true calling, as well as some actionable steps that you can take to start living that out. So to register for the free webinar, visit menunplugged.net forward slash calling. That's C-A-L-L-I-N-G. Now, if you can't wait until the webinar, you can set up a coaching call with me to discuss one-on-one or group training right away. Just go to that same page at menunplugged.net forward slash calling and click the button that says can't wait, schedule a coaching call. Now, if the pressures are working family, The demands for your attention or the furious pace of life have you feeling overwhelmed, wiped out, or distant from God, and you're ready to break free so you can finally connect with God on a deeper level. Remove your distractions quickly and easily. Unplug from those things that weigh you down. Strengthen your relationships and get back your time, energy, and freedom. I want to help. In my new book, Cut Through the Noise, Four Steps to Joy, Peace, and Freedom, you'll discover a revolutionary four-step system to reclaim your life. Created from a simple, practical action that we all execute on a daily basis, you're going to be able to take massive action in your life right now. As an added bonus, I've also included over 40 minutes of free audio interviews with several top Christian leaders where I ask them how they break through the noise in their own life. So to get your cell copy today, visit menunplug.net forward slash noise. That's N-O-I-S-E. All right, let's cue the intro. So the big question is this, how do we as warriors of Jesus Christ, men of God who want to stay battle ready, who want to honor the Lord, and who want to grow in our daily walk, unplug from those things that weigh us down so we can ignite our faith, strengthen our family, and ultimately succeed in every aspect of life? That is the question, and this show will give you the answers. My name is Jeff Jarena, and welcome to Men Unplugged. Hey, welcome back to the program. And as you may recall, I mentioned in the intro of this episode that the first quality of leadership that I spoke about, the one from episode 126, to me, in a way, it precedes this quality. To me, they go hand in hand. Now, talking about this second quality of leadership, this is the one at times it's difficult to employ, especially when we're forced to do something new or, or maybe try something different. This quality, it stretches our limits. It gets us out of our comfort zone, but here's what it also does. It helps us see what we're made of. And at the same time, it's the one that has some of the greatest rewards. It builds on itself. And when we display this quality of leadership, it invokes a sense of pride, at least healthy pride that is. Now, this quality of leadership, it's the one that ignites a spark deep down in your soul where you're like, yeah, I knew I could do that. When we watch movies like Braveheart, King Arthur, A Knight's Tale, Lord of the Rings, Karate Kid, or Rudy, we can see without a shadow of a doubt that the main characters in those movies have this element of leadership. So what am I talking about? You actually probably already figured it out. It's the quality of courage. Now, when we see someone else that displays this quality, we get fired up. And when you've had to reach down deep and engage this quality yourself, more than likely, you've been better because of it. You know, you've grown from it. Now, if we're really honest with ourselves, we all have this quality in some level. Even from a kid, you had courage. I mean, you had courage to learn how to crawl, how to walk, even how to ride a bike. You also had courage to face your parents, you know, when you did something wrong or when you told a lie or you didn't do what they said and, and you know what, you had to face them and tell them the truth, that takes a lot of courage. You also had to have courage to learn a new skill or even interview for that new job. You know, at least the ones where there's three or more people sitting in a room and you're like, whoa, I'm really going to be tested here. 
And it wasn't that you didn't have any fears when you displayed this quality of leadership. Rather, what really happened is that you pressed forward in the presence of fear. You see, there's really no such thing as courage without fear. Because without fear, we have no need to be courageous. And that's something that I was so glad to find out years ago because there have been many times where I didn't want to press forward, where you know maybe I didn't want to share something that I didn't like about myself to another brother in Christ, or I didn't want to try something new unless I understood this simple truth about courage. And it's one that if you don't already know, I hope that what I share today is going to give you the motivation and firepower to implement this quality in your own life today. So with that, let's look at a few biblical characters, ones that give us an example of courage. And then I'm going to share a few quotes on courage. And I'm going to leave you with a challenge that you can apply today. So as we look at these biblical figures, the the first one that comes to my mind is Moses. Moses had the courage to lead the Israelites from Pharaoh's captivity. And you can read about that in Exodus chapter 3. Now, the second individual that I want to talk about is Abraham. Abraham had the courage to leave his country. You know, the land which he knew everything about it. He was comfortable, but he, he left to obey God and travel to the promised land. Now, the next biblical character I want to talk about is David. Here's this lowly shepherd boy who just finally had enough. He was tired of being pushed around, picked on, and bullied by Goliath, by this mighty giant. He was tired of his countrymen and himself being told, you can't do this, you don't have what it takes. So what did David do? He faced Goliath in the midst of his fear, took him down, and because of that, saved Israel and ended up being Israel's greatest king. And the last Old Testament figure that I want to talk about here before I talk about two New Testament characters, the last one here in the Old Testament is Joshua. Joshua had the courage to step up in leadership and lead the Israelites into the promised land. You know, this is after God handed the leadership role from Moses to Joshua. And as we read the text, we can see that Joshua was afraid. In fact, three times in the first chapter of Joshua, God tells Joshua to not be afraid, but instead to have courage. So let's read about that here in Joshua 1, verses 5 through 9. I'm just going to read the scripture here. It says, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. There's the first time that God told Joshua to be courageous. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. There's a second time. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. There's the third time that God told Joshua to have courage. Then he finishes it by saying, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And then Joshua got it. Because God is with me, I don't have to fear. Or I can press forward in the presence of my fear in the midst of my fear. And in this chapter, the last thing that Joshua tells the Israelites is, guess what? To be courageous. Joshua 1.18. So if we look to the New Testament, there's two individuals that come to my mind. The first one is Peter. The account that comes to my mind right away is the one where they're on the boat. Jesus is calling out to the disciples. He says, come to me. And so what does Peter do? He steps out of the boat, walks on the water, Now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to finish this up here in a second, but I want to say this. Peter's the only one to get out of the boat. He's the only one. They all heard Jesus, but yet Peter's the only one to face his fear, to push forward in the midst of his fear, display courage, and walk towards Jesus. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. This is kind of a, a sidebar in this episode, but you know what's interesting about that is that in this account, As long as Peter 
had his eyes focused on Jesus Christ, he was walking on water. I mean, he was doing the impossible. But as soon as he looked at the waves, looked at the storm, what happened? He drowned. And so it's a good lesson here is that we should always keep our eyes focused on Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2. But I go back here and I, and I think about Peter here. I think about how he displayed this courage right here, that he's the only disciple to do that. And, and to me, I don't know if this is the full reason here, but to me, I think this was a big reason why Jesus chose Peter to lead the church is because of Peter was always displaying courage. Yeah, Peter had his doubts, he had his sins, he had his failures, he he had his shortcomings, he had all these things that, you know, he didn't measure up, just like us. He was bold, he was brash, but yet, what did he do? He continually displayed courage. And so if you want to find out more about that, you know, the account that I just shared, you can read about that in Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Now, the last example that I want to share here in the New Testament, and really to wrap this up here before we get to those quotes that I want to share, is Paul. Here's a guy that, you know, he hated Christians. He hated him so much that he killed him. And then he had that miraculous encounter with Jesus, the road to Damascus, and Paul's life was completely transformed for the better. And to me, Paul repeatedly displayed courage in spite of his fear. And and one account that I want to talk about here is the one in Philippians chapter 1. And here's what happened. He was actually falsely imprisoned in Philippi where he was chained to Roman praetorian guards for 24 hours a day. That meant that there was a Roman guard chained to Paul 24-7. But what happened? He remained steadfast in sharing the good news of Christ. He didn't relent. He displayed courage. And what's so amazing about this account is that because of his courage, Many believers were inspired to share the gospel throughout the region, and many people came to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And here's what it says in Philippians 1, 12 through 14. I'll start with verse 12. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it's become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So with that, I want to summarize what these guys did in one sentence. And to me, it's a key that unlocks and unleashes this quality of leadership in your own life today. Here's what they did. And it's what we need to do every time we're afraid is this one thing right here. It's to not focus on our fears, but to focus on the Father. For when we do that, there's no telling how far that you can go, what you can achieve, how many blessings are waiting for you on the other side of that fear, or rather those false expectations appearing real. You know, that's something that you can can think about when you hear fear. I'm, I'm sure you may have heard that, but false expectations appearing real. All right, so here's some of those quotes that I want to leave with you before I initiate the challenge. So the first quote comes from an individual by the name of Ambrose Redmond. And here's the quote. It says, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important. And the second one's from Anias Nin. And it says, life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. And the third one's from Orison Martin. Most of our obstacles would melt away if, instead of cowering before them, we should make up our minds to walk boldly through them. And the last one is from Sven Erikson. The greatest barrier to success is the fear of failure. Now, those are just a few of the quotes that have spoken to me over the past week or so, and I hope in some way they're going to be a blessing to you. All right, so here's the challenge. I want to start by saying that I want to commend you for your courage to step out in faith and live for Jesus Christ. We need more men like you to do just that. Because let's face it, this world is not going to throw a parade for us when we do that. It's not going to applaud us. It's not going to do any of that stuff. Quite the opposite. You may lose your job. You may lose a relationship. You may have someone block your social media page or, or stop talking to you if you do this. They may talk bad about you 
They may even persecute you, but that's okay because we know where our true identity and our victory reside in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be to God for He gives us our victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And our ultimate reward here, we have to remember, is salvation. It's eternal life with God in heaven. And remember that God is right there with you, uplifting you, caring for you, and protecting you every second. So what do we have to fear but fear itself? For what can man do to me? In fact, Psalm 118 verse 6 says this, The Lord is on my side. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? All right, so here's the challenge. What is the one thing that you've been holding back from doing? Maybe trying or starting or saying to someone else because of fear. And in light of this episode, what is the one thing that you can do or say that would allow you to display courage in the midst of your fear so you can make some real progress in that area, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever that is. Now, once you have those two questions answered, I want to challenge you to press forward in courage, to overcome that obstacle or initiate that difficult conversation, or even to stand up for what's right in this world, for what's right in your community, for what's right in your home, for what's right in your job, your ministry, your church, or whatever that is in a God-honoring and God-fearing way. Because let's face it, man, if you don't do it, if we don't start standing up, if we don't start displaying this quality of leadership, trust in God that He's going to see us through, that He's going to protect us. If we don't start doing that, our freedoms are going to be taken away. Our rights are going to be taken away. Our liberties are going to be taken away. Your voice is going to be taken away. I know, guys, I, I'm not trying to get off a rant here, but I'm tired of being quiet. I can't be quiet any longer. And so I'm, I'm hoping and I'm praying for a revival in the hearts of men, in the souls of men, that there are men that want to mount up, that want to rise up, that want to do the right thing, that want to honor God in all that they're doing, that want to honor others, and that want to stand up for what's true, what's right, what's lovely, what's admirable. All these things in Philippians 4.8 that don't want to back down from a world that is trying to tell us that God is wrong or what he says is right is wrong. We got to be the ones that get this thing going, that turn it around in the right direction. We need individual men, pockets of men, groups of men that will encourage their pastors, encourage their churches to stand up. And if you need some encouragement in that area, you need somebody to help get people fired up, whatever that is, guys, reach out to me on the contact page at menunplugged.net. Send me an email at jeff at menunplugged.net. I would love to come out there for free and motivate you guys, encourage you guys. Get this thing going because you know what? God right now, I believe he's truly calling out a remnant of believers in Jesus Christ that are ready, that are ready to speak up for what's right, what's lovely, what's true. And these same men are going to do it in a way that is admirable, that is worthy, that is true, that is noble. It's done with integrity. And it builds people up. It points people to Jesus Christ. It points people to the Father. It points them to God's word saying that, look, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. There is no other way. We can't conform to the pattern of this world anymore. we got to renew our minds daily through the word of God, through the voice of God, and through the power of God. And the only way we can do that, number one, is in prayer. Well, I wouldn't say number one. There's several ways, but first, got to pray. we got to spend time with God. And we have to what? Guys, we have to do something with what He's showing us. We have to act on that. And the biggest way we can do that is let your voice be heard in a good way, in a peaceful way. Let your voice be heard in a peaceful and loving way. And I want to be very clear about that. That is what I'm saying, in a peaceful and loving way. We got to stand in the gap, man. 
God has created you as a warrior, Jesus Christ, as a man of God, to stand in the gap, to be the watchman, to be the provider, the protector, the preserver of your family, all that's good and true. God has given us that mission. And we got to take it. So if you're a man that's willing to do that, I'm asking you to reach out to me on the contact page at menunplugged.net and then you just look for the contact page or menunplugged.net forward slash contact. And let me just tell you, if that's you, you're a remnant. You're a son of the King of the Most High King, Jesus Christ. That is who you are. Well, I hope, uh, guys, that uh, that ran. I hope you took that in a, in the, in a good a good way, in a loving way. I typically don't do that if you listen to this episode. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on inside me. I think it's the Holy Spirit. I just, I just feel like we need to do something. It's time for the men of God, for Christian men, to stand up, to display courage, to stand up for God, to stand up for others. This world needs leadership. And the best leadership we know is Jesus. And Jesus uses us as ambassadors, as peacemakers, as his light to be those leaders in this world. And if you're doubting that that's you right now, I would say just take this episode and push forward just a little bit in courage in a way that honors God and honors others. And I think as you do that, and as more men do that, it's going to be amazing to see what God has in store for us this year, next year, and the year after that. And I'm talking about really awesome stuff. And I'd love to hear your story. Once you've taken these steps, and maybe it's a small thing that you're having to do, I would love to hear your story. Just reach out to me on the contact page at menunplugged.net. All right, that wraps up today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope what I shared encouraged, I hope it blessed, and I hope it equipped you. Now, before you go, I want to remind you about my Clarify Your Calling webinar. It's on September 20th at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And you can register for that free webinar at menunplug.net forward slash calling right now. That's C-A-L-L-I-N-G. And lastly, make sure you visit menunplug.net forward slash noise. That's N-O-I-S-E to get your own copy of my book, Cut Through the Noise, Four Steps to Joy, Peace, and Freedom. This book is going to help you reclaim, recharge, and renew your life. You're going to gain the wisdom and tools to connect with God on a deeper level. Remove your daily distractions quickly and easily. Unplug from those things that weigh you down. Strengthen your relationships and get back your time, energy, and freedom. Now, I also want to remind you that there's over 40 minutes of free audio interviews with several top Christian leaders that you can gain access to right away when you purchase the book. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There's plenty more to see at menunplugged.net, including key resources and ways to engage with Jeff in his training and speaking forums. While there, don't forget to subscribe and receive a free gift. We look forward to you joining us next time here on the Men Unplugged Show.